Good afternoon. My name is Alex Piroglu. Today is the 1st of March 2016. We are here at the offices of uh, CMC Markets for another um, monthly meeting of the UK chapter of the Market Technicians Association. Today's with us is Steve Goldstein. Steve, Hello. thank you very much for uh, coming to uh, do this presentation. Steve is the executive coach, coach of Alpha R Cubed. And before we start the um, actual presentation, we'll have a, a small chat, which I hope you will find interesting. First of all, Steve, uh, could you give us some information about your uh, educational and personal background before getting involved with, uh, with markets? Okay, so um, actually I, I started in markets in, in 1986. So um, I, I pretty much went there without any, uh, any further education from university. So I, I think in those days it was still considered quite uh, unusual to go into trading with, uh, with a university degree. It was uh, perhaps just changing shortly after that. So uh, I went straight. I went straight pretty much from uh, from school. I went to work in a local uh, local bank. Um, didn't really enjoy it very much. Found it a bit boring and dull. And uh, somebody suggested, or friends said, that they're getting in the city. It's it's a lot more exciting. Why don't you come up and do that? So uh, I, I went straight to work for a Japanese bank in 1986, looking after their uh, their, their their positions. So it's more of a middle office job. Uh, within a year, I moved on to the trading desk, mm. and they gave me my first trading book in uh, October 1987. So it was a bit of a baptism by fire, <laughs> and uh, and I've been I've been doing it ever since then, uh, pretty much. I did do a university degree later on. I did an MBA in 2001, which uh, which even then was quite unusual for uh, for traders to do a university degree after they've actually started on in a trading career. Mm. But um, I had a best part of a 25 year career. In trading, working for uh, mostly Credit Suisse and Commerce Bank in that time, but uh, a few other banks, American Express Bank, um, and uh, Japanese Bank as well. So, so a very um, rich background. Yes. Can you update us now to your present uh, course in terms of being an executive coach for Alpha R Cubed? What is Alpha R Cubed, and um, what are your day-to-day -day responsibilities? Okay, so Alpha R Cubed is a company. Um, which focuses on improving the performance aspects of trading um, and risk in general, so risk around trading. So uh, we work with traders, we work with teams within trading businesses, um, and we work with managers, uh, really helping to improve performance in all those aspects. Uh, we're also involved in um, more and more these days in conduct risk and risk behaviour. Mm -hmm. So more on the qualitative side, and the collaborative side, mm -hmm. helping firms explore how they can improve risk behaviours, mm -hmm. conduct risk, risk culture. So it's uh, it, it's quite a broad, broad scope, really. Um, of course, uh, the to, today's presentation will be on the topic of uh, trader psychology, and actually, it's a very interesting subject. Um, let it read it off of my notes. It says that um, it's not markets we conquer; it is ourselves how trader personality impacts trader performance and behavior. Um, can you give us a bit some information, like a synopsis of your presentation and what is exactly the, the risk type compass? Because I had the, the privilege of looking into your um, right. the, the presentation notes. So I found that particularly interesting. Okay, okay. Well, the view we take of trader personality is that, um, that everyone to some degree has some quirks of behavior um, that is almost part of the human condition. So if, if you read the trader psychology books um, and trader psychology articles in it, everyone says you have to become more disciplined. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, in one, one sense or another, all of us are slightly more disciplined, um, whether it's from taking too much risk, not enough risk, not sticking uh, to what we said we're going to do, or sometimes sticking too long to our views. So everyone has a different relationship with, with trading psychology and with the aspects of trading performance. We actually like to look at what is their personal relationship. It's, so it's, it's not about overcoming psychology in general, it's overcoming their own psychology. Mm -hmm. So that's very much our philosophy. Now the Risk Compass tool is a tool which was developed around helping people understand their core risk personality. Mm -hmm. And it's a tool we started using in 2014. It was created by some occupational psychologists. And it, um, it, it identifies everyone as one of eight different risk types. 
Um, and we've used that, we've taken that further and identified behaviours which we can characterise as being particular to each individual risk type. Mm -hmm. So um, if someone is the deliberate risk type, they're usually very calm, very rational, very methodical, um, and, and the, the sort of discipline which we talk about tends not to affect them too much. But on the other hand, they can be um, they, they can be too calm and too relaxed, and not reacting to noise that comes from the market. It's almost like sometimes they're a little bit too laid back. Mm -hmm. And actually, their discipline comes from sometimes staying too long with the information and not actually picking up on the noise within the market. On the other side of them, directly opposite, them on the compass is the excitable type, who are spontaneous, intuitive, uh, reactive, um, and they, 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 they very much feed off the noise of the market. Um, they're, they're, they're the ones who are very quickly responding to new data, new information, um, almost reacting first, thinking about it second. Now they can be brilliant, but they can also get themselves into trouble because sometimes they're, they're lacking enough um, structure around their work. So it, it, it identifies everyone as really a different risk types, different characteristics, different upside traits and different downside traits. And what we find is that the people who are successful are those who are best able to leverage their upside traits and best able to somehow offset um, their downside traits or their weaknesses. And um, okay, so I heard you mentioning about some profiles. <coughs> Be, um, what is the identification process? Is it like a questionnaire, or how do you pigeonhole, to put it that way, someone into a category? Yeah, it, it, it's it, it's a questionnaire. So it's purely objective. There's no subjectiveness to it at all, um, other than the fact that you will be presented with three questions with three options, and you will select which one of them is most like you. Mm -hmm. um, so th it's only mildly subjective, um, but it, it's, it's very unlikely you're going to have trouble differentiating which type you are from those questions. So it's, it's about maybe 50 odd questions, um, and, and you, you can't really fiddle it because there's an algorithm behind it, and if it finds some patterns which are, um, which are really out of sync, then it will produce a failed report. So it, it's been developed by occupational psychologists, um, and it uses a model which itself has become the standard personality model that's formed over many decades. Mm -hmm. And it's been road tested on, I think, over 10,000 individuals now. So it's been thoroughly tested and it's found to be highly accurate. Um, okay, which brings me to my next question. Um, you talk about a test. If I'm not mistaken, in 2014, 2015, you did uh, some research yourself on traders and trader risk and personality. Um, would you like to share with us the uh, results of that research? Yes, yes. So, so what we did is, um, when we started using this tool, um, we, we hand out to the participants a question as well, questionnaire. So we, we want to understand um, what is their, uh, what products are they trading, how are they trading them, what methods are they using, what is their analytical, analytical techniques, how long have they been trading. So the, the, the questionnaire has gone out to probably about 80 or so individuals over the, uh, the, the 10 month period from November last year to September, mm -hmm. or November of the year before to September this year. Um, now they're mostly roughly split between banks and hedge fund traders mm -hmm. with a few individuals who are accepted from commodity trading. Um, and then what we did is we removed those with less than five years experience because we, we wanted to just include those that we felt have made it past boot camp. Mm -hmm. They've shown their metal and that they're capable of being traders, uh, which, which removed about 20 or so. So we, we had about 60 individuals, probably an average of 10 to 15 years trading experience um, from lots of different markets, FX, rates, fixed income, credit, commodities, energy. And we've, we've sort of grouped them or, or plotted them on the, um, on the risk type compass diagram to see where they fit. And then we've looked at what the various different dimensions are as traders, method, approach, um, type, uh, trading style, whether they're buy side, sell side. And we've noticed some interesting patterns and clusters starting to form, which kind of identifies what sort of trader would do well in what particular role. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of time frames and markets, or is it in which? Time frames, markets, um, products, buy side, sell side. Whether they're option traders, vol tra yeah, obviously vol traders, 
relative value traders, propriety traders, whether they're short term, whether they're long term. And we've noticed some interesting patterns with one or two anomalies to those patterns as well. And, and we are conscious it's, it's 61, which isn't a huge, huge uh, amount of data. But obviously since then we've added probably another 10 or 15, which, which won't be on the research here, which have kind of continued to corroborate the patterns we're seeing. Got it. Um, switching from research to education. Yeah. Um, we often get uh, here, uh, for example, a lot of uh, MTA uh, members or attendees of the chapter meetings usually ask the speakers for um, information, you know, for, for references for further information education. Yeah. If you would recommend, say, a few books on trading psychology or trading, which ones would this be for someone interested in the, on the subject? Okay, so um, I mean, th there's all different angles. There's knowing about yourself more. There's how you apply. Um, trading psychology within your trading performance and I suppose there's there's just general aspects of um, general books which improve your self-awareness so I would say that there's, that there's different books I mean I, I find all the market wizards books Jack Schrager's books uh, fantastic reading um, and I've read them over and over again over the years and mm -hmm. I think I discover something new every time I read them and I also discover something about myself every time I read them um, there's the Mark Douglas books as well. Um, they're, they're more applicable to how you apply your trading, um, your trading psychology to your trading. Um, and they're, they're a great reference point for everyone uh, when it comes to trading. Um, I've heard some people say they are the best ever. A few others who said maybe they're not, they've not really been to apply, able to apply the lessons. Um, and that is, one of the, that is one of the challenges for trading books and trading psychology and trading and learning in, in many cases. That if you're one particular type and you're learning from someone who is another particular type, you may not necessarily have the best tutor for you. Mm -hmm. It's always better to learn from somebody who's a similar type to you. Of course. Um, and we found this in our work, in, in our coaching work with traders inside banks and hedge, hedge funds, that when they learn from people who are different to them, it's not always the best, that, that there's learning gaps in their, uh, in their trading uh, knowledge. And um, I like books from outside trading as well, which uh, there's, there's um, The Super Forecaster, which is a new book by Dan Gardner, and uh, um, I can't remember the other, Tetlock, I think it's Philip Tetlock. Yeah, um, there's the work, there's books by, um, there's a great book called Mindset, which again isn't about trading, um, but it's about learning about yourself as a, as a, as a person in your own mindset. Mm -hmm. uh, that's by Carol Dweck. Um, so it's, there's lots of different books. I mean, I, depending I, on the particular area that you're interested. Yes, yeah, but there, there, there's, there's, I mean, there's books that from outside of trading where you can learn, a, learn an awful, awful lot about yourself as an individual. Okay, since having um, read and gone into depth into the issue of trading psychology, if you could distill your knowledge in three market axioms, which ones would this be? Okay, so three more. I, th I think nuggets of wisdom, you know. Think three, three. No, I think I think the biggest mistake people make is not to understand or not to apply good money management. Mm -hmm. um, and most of the traders I know who are very successful have, at some point or other, learnt the hard way mm -hmm. that you need to have a strong money management uh, discipline. Um, I think a lot of people don't even know what money management is, and I, I, I find experienced traders who who have money management failures. Mm -hmm. um, but it is, it's probably one of the most successful aspects. Uh, that's the first principle. I think the second principle is, um, is becoming more aware of yourself. I mean, that's something I do with my own coaching. I work with individual traders to help them become more aware of their, of their, their, their risk, um, their risk behaviors, how they affect them, um, and how, how aspects around them, our aspects in the world around them holistically affect them and affect their decisions. So becoming more aware of yourself as a trader and a person, um, it, we, we've, we find it makes a huge difference to people's performance. Um, third principle is, I think, just, you know, working effectively as opposed to working hard. Mm -hmm. um, that is probably sounds quite general but uh, 
that there, there is you, you can spend 15 hours at the desk and, and just not work effectively at all or you could spend one hour at a desk and work really effectively have, have, have results yeah so great thank you and um, if you could call up uh, 25 year old Steve what would you advise him 25 year old Steve um, the biggest influence on me as a trader was actually when I had coaching in 2001 I was working at Commerce Bank at the time and I was offered executive coaching um, which is really about it, it, it's it's more about targeting um, managers and helping them improve their management performance and leadership performance but the awareness I got from that about myself as a trader as a risk taker was phenomenal and my trading performance which was probably you know after, after what was by then a 14 year career was it probably sagged for three or four years I mean suddenly it just took off from there onwards um, and that was I think that was a self-awareness self-knowledge which came from that process and it would really have been that you know I would have taken that in year one year two year mm -hmm. three year four year five and kept on doing it every single year self-awareness self-awareness yes yeah um, fun fact what does Steve do outside of market hours do you have any hobbies um, yep yep I like um, I'm a big football fan mm -hmm. Uh, big Arsenal fan, which isn't the greatest place to be this week. <laughs> um, so, uh, yep, I love I love other sports. I love playing tennis. Um, I love running um, and walking. I haven't ran so much recently, um, but in the past I've done a couple of marathons. Um, I just like socialise. I like meeting people. I mean, you know, there, there was a period when I started doing this this new job coaching when I left trading in two thousand and nine, and. It was very hard not being around people in a trading room. Mm -hmm. And actually, I mean, I, I kept on trading. Uh, I still trade now with a small PA account. Uh, more for fun these days, keep my hand in. Um, but um, for that first year or so, I was trading from home actively. And not having people around me, I found it pretty challenging. Um, there's, there's a lot of noise, a lot of information. But there's also a lot of... Um, Camaraderie. Camaraderie, yes. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, so um, I, I think that's, uh, you know, I, I just like meeting people and that, that's what I love about this job now is I get to meet so many different people, traders, people I coach, um, people I work with, so, yeah. Got it. Steve, I can't thank you enough for this very interesting uh, interview. Thank you. I'm really looking forward to your uh, presentation. Yeah. Uh, and I would like to thank you for watching this presentation. I hope you will uh, also tune in in the MTA website where Steve's presentation will be archived. Uh, this is Alex Birubli from London. Thank you very much.